Hi, welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Blaine Roski. I'm Director of Product Management for Software within Brocade's uh, Storage Networking Division. Uh, and I'm here with Marcus. Hi, Blaine. Yeah, my name is Marcus Thoral. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect in the Brocade Storage Networking Division in Broadcom. So what we'd like to do today is talk to you a little bit about congestion and specifically what is congestion as it relates to a fiber channel SAN? How has Brocade introduced features around monitoring, detection, alerting, notification of congestion conditions? And what have we done with our latest Brocade Gen 7 fiber channel switches and directors and Brocade FOSS operating system to make improvements in this area? And one of the things we want to get into is talk a little bit about some of the different types of congestion. So Marcus, let's uh, let's dive right into it. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of congestion that can occur in a fiber channel SAN environment. When frames enter the fabric faster than they exit, buffer credits are exhausted and congestion happens. As a result, traffic slows down. There are three root causes to this. Lost credits, credit stall, and oversubscription. The first one, lost credits, is usually due to physical layer issues, cables or SFPs. Credit stall is when a device has an issue that means that it doesn't release buffers in a timely fashion. We normally refer to this as a slow drain device. And then the third case, oversubscription is the most common in fiber channel SANS today, often occurring when you have multiple fiber channel generations in the same fabric. For example, an older 16 gig database server, and now it's having its database on a new, very high performing 32 gig all flash array, and it does a large read, or for example, a table scan, it gets data so fast that it cannot take the frames off the fabric in a fast enough, and therefore congestion happens. Symptoms, they range from mild over moderate to severe, and the impact on applications is respectively from minimal considerates to drastic. And obviously, since we can identify these in the fabric, we want to mitigate and avoid that there is any considerate or drastic application performance impact. So Marcus, you know, years ago, we introduced some of these, uh, these features that are still very valuable for, uh, for addressing and identifying congestion. Uh, you know, we put in place buffer credit recovery introduced back with our Gen 5 products many, many years ago. Uh, we added capabilities within the uh, MAP suite, right? The monitoring and alerting policy suite uh, that we call fabric performance impact monitoring, where we were able to detect uh, these conditions in the fabric where uh, a device or uh, communication within the fabric is slowing down, there's congestion, we'd flag that. So what, what have we done different now with Gen 7? There's uh, this latest feature around fabric notification. So talk a little bit about that and uh, what we have now that's uh, really groundbreaking technology around identifying and resolving this, uh, these congestion conditions, in particular for, for, let's say, lost credit. The big difference with fabric performance impact notification is that we can now notify the devices about what the fabric C uh, is the issue, and then we can tell the devices to take a corrective action. And when it comes to, for example, lost credits, we can tell the device, you're the reason for a lost credit, and then the device can basically replenish that credit directly. But it can also happen at a much lower level in Gen 7, we have something we call link level recovery, which basically means using fiber channel primitives, we're able to tell the device at the other end, hey, something happened here, please fix it, and then it's fixed. So Marcus, when you say the device at the other end, you're, you mean that our fiber channel switches are actually able to communicate with the HBA, with the host, or with the storage array and let them know that we have a link level problem that needs to be addressed or resolved. That is correct. Okay, so that kind of covers the lost credit condition. Uh, then we've got um, credit stall, right? We've got credit stall devices, something that uh, Brocade introduced, again, a few years back was the concept of slow drain device quarantine, where we could actually isolate off a slow drain uh, flow, traffic flow, from others to kind of mitigate against that, right? So tell, tell us a little bit more about slow drain device quarantine or SDDQ as we call it. 
The credit stall behavior is very characteristic and uh, straightforward to identify in the fabric. And actually between switches on the inter-switch links, we can solve for that uh, with what we call STDQ or slow, slow drain device quarantine. What we do is we take that uh, flow and then we move it to a low priority VC. That means it's placed on a VC with dedicated buffers for slow drain flows. Secondly, we also release the buffers a little bit lower to sort of mitigate the flow actually being slow draining. As a result, the flows that were on the original VCs are no longer impacted or held up by this uh, slow draining device. It's actually a solution that works really well today and it takes away the fire drill of solving for this slow drain device while other applications are impacted. And now you can take care of it in a normal uh, maintenance window uh, and solve it. So to use a, uh, a kind of a traffic highway analogy, you've got five lanes of highway out there and you've got a couple slow moving trucks in the middle of all that traffic. You move them over into their own lane. You don't take them off the highway altogether, but you put them in their own lane, let them travel at the speed that works for them and stop impacting the rest of the lanes of traffic, right? Let those lanes work as they should, right? Correct. That is exactly how it works. Uh, it's not stopping the slow drain uh, traffic. It's just moving it to a dedicated lane so all the other traffic can pass through at the normal speed. What have we done in terms of our management software and specifically our Brocade SAN Nav management portal software to provide the SAN admin with more visibility on what's going on in terms of uh, identifying and mitigating against these different types of congestion. We've obviously always had alerting. In SANNAV, what we've done is we visualized what is the impact of uh, the slow drain device. And if a device is placed into quarantine, it is basically called out. We have a default dashboard called NPTC or Network Port Traffic Conditions Dashboard. And there you get a visual representation of the impact of a slow drain device as well as called out if a device has been placed in quarantine. And from there, you can then go into additional troubleshooting if you want. But actually in that same dashboard, you can also see uh, oversubscribed hosts and their severity as well as impact. All right, so Marcus, you know, you talked about this generational improvement that we're seeing, you know, performance of uh, new equipment being brought in, causing kind of new issues with oversubscription. So with our Gen 7 products, we've introduced this new feature called Traffic Optimizer. And that's really specifically intended to address this type of oversubscription behavior, right? The whole idea behind Traffic Optimizer is to put like traffic on the same lane. And so if we go back to the picture we had before with the freeway and multiple lanes, what we do here is we put traffic between devices that have the same speed on the same lane. And also, if there is uh, traffic with different protocols, we also segregate those out and put them in separate lanes. And so in the fiber channel fabric, what that means is they now have dedicated VCs for these different performance groups, we call them, uh, based on what speed the device is or what protocol it's using. And in the case where you have a slow drain device, then obviously that's moved out of, uh, of that performance group. But also, if a device changes characteristics, uh, then it can also dynamically be moved uh, from one performance group to another performance group. So that's really how Traffic Optimizer works. And the whole idea is to avoid uh, these oversubscription uh, issues really impacting uh, each other so uh, in the first place and secondly to be able to react much faster without any manual intervention okay so does uh you know the oversubscription condition uh does that uh, have any implications around that fpin the fabric performance impact notifications is there any way to address oversubscription problems uh using fpin what FPIN does here, the Fabric Performance Impact Notification, it tells the device, let's say it's, for example, it's the server that receives a notification saying that you're creating congestion on the network. Then now the HPA 
and basically throttle back how fast it releases buffers up to the logical volume manager in the operating system or it can also put a limit to how many outstanding IOs that it allows that server to put out on the fabric. Because if it knows that it, it, it cannot basically receive data that fast, it doesn't make sense to ask the storage array to send data before it's able to actually receive it. So Marcus, it sounds like that'll be a great topic to dive into a little bit further in an upcoming uh, Tech Talk session. So just to kind of wrap things up, uh, hopefully this, uh, this dialogue has given you a little bit more information about some of the new capabilities, uh, specifically around identifying, monitoring, and mitigating against different types of uh, congestion conditions that can occur in a fiber channel SAN. Uh, this is definitely one of the steps in Brocade's progression toward uh, creating the autonomous SAN, really providing better capabilities around learning behaviors and conditions in the fabric optimizing for the, the uh, fabric and the different types of devices and traffic and communication going on, and then healing, automatically uh, correcting those behaviors, healing uh, congestion conditions, and really moving about so that the SAN admin can spend more time focused on other activities in the environment, less time uh, dealing with these problems, let the SAN take care of itself, and uh, Brocade's features around congestion, monitoring, identification, mitigation, and resolution are really the, the next step in achieving that autonomous SAN. So thank you very much for joining us, Marcus. Thanks for all the, uh, the wonderful insight and details around the features. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again very soon.